Bagnale. Yeah, let's go. Bagnale. Oh, it's too damn hot. Wow. That was pretty intense on the face and the body. Just, yeah. Man, dry heat just felt like opening a dryer door and sticking your head in it. Сейчас самый середины дня мы просто охреневаем от жары. Сейчас именно под 45 градусов по Цельсию, по Фаренгейту 108, 109, не знаю. Очень жарко, середина дня, самое пекло. Мы заплатили только что по 20 долларов, чтобы прийти посмотреть на интересную такую достопримечательность, которую я даже не знал, а узнал только, когда начал гуглить местность. Замок Монтезума. 1600 год постройки. Самое интересное, вот сколько там еще комнат, что если ты внутри и внутрь зайдешь, типа сколько там можно бродить. И вообще тут нету никакой лестницы наверх. То есть они, возможно, это отреставрировали и оставили как есть. Туда даже никто не заходит. Возможно, внутри ничего нету. Но все равно это не менее круто. Селфи. Видео селфи. Видео селфи. И Монтезума. Монтезума. Тысячи лет. Да. Hey, how you doing? Good. Can I answer any questions for anyone? Sure. What kind of question? I've been a member of the Wolverine State Archaeology for about 40 years now. All right. So What's the chances of me going up there? I, all you got to do is become a, a ranger and get invited. <laughs> Are you tired? It's hot. But no sun. Look. 111. But don't have sun. Feels like 115. <laughs> Just take it if the sun was out, it'd be 119, 118. 150. Whew. Easy. Slab City. Yeah, we go to Slab City. 120 degrees. Easy. I go. <laughs> you go? Yeah. I go. Yeah. Why not? If we die, we die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put more water. But <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> well, it's good because I don't have humidity. I just made humidity. Yeah, he just made, but like in the air, <laughs> nothing. Just nothing. Zero, zero. All the humidity is coming off of me. Тут непонятно какие-то тучи пришли. По карте тут вообще ничего не должно быть, ни дождя. Ну, скорее всего, это может быть туман от какого-нибудь пожара, где-нибудь там что-то горит серьезное. Но, как бы, с другой стороны, эта штука сейчас закрыла все солнце и, и в принципе, будет полегче ехать. У нас еще по плану там пару мест проехаться. Они же тоже выбрались, блин, в середину дня поехали. Еще на мотоциклах без кондиционера, без ничего, сам как трушные байкеры. Сейчас еще немножко передохнем. Хотя, блин, мы вообще ничего не делаем. Даже тут чуть-чуть буквально прошлись, там уже какие-то уставшие, вымутанные все. Yes? Yeah. Короче, сейчас соберемся, наверное, и поедем дальше. Байки кипят, вообще просто жесть. Ну ничего, справимся. Our bikes boiled. Boiled. Yeah. Lots of breaks get too hot mm -hmm. all the seals will start leaking everything well actually you can almost get too hot and the piston will seize mm -hmm. and stop we don't want that 
very hot. Now no sun, so no sun. Good. It's good. It's better. Just wind. <laughs> hot wind. Hot wind. Hot water. Hot water. Hot wind. Hot power to drink in hot water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Always hot water. Одна из достопримечательностей этой местности Седона – это вот такие вот просто охренительные красные скалы. Они снимались в очень многих вестернах, фильмах американских. И, честно, я не помню, что там за фильмы были, но что-то такое я припоминаю, было точно. But do you know in which movies this rocks was been? Like which kind of westerns? Do you know the name? I don't know. You don't know? I'm sure there are some movies. Yeah, for sure. Me too, like, I saw this it's, it's many John times. Wayne? But which kind of, I don't know. John Wayne, Clint Eastwood? Maybe, I don't know. They call it Clint Eastwood, that was spaghetti westerns. Mm -hmm. That's what they call it, spaghetti westerns. Spaghetti westerns? Spaghetti westerns. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> Check it out. Короче, в целом прикольно вообще вот это местечко, здесь очень круто, вот так вот едешь по дороге, вот эти вот красные скалы, э, небольшие вот эти какие-то кусты зеленые там на них где-то есть, где-то нет, но выглядит очень все круто, прям максимально круто. You like this place? It's awesome. 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 Wow. Inside. Inside is more. Wow. I feel I want to fly. You see someone live in this castle? Yeah. It's like a castle. Wow. This house. Yes. And they have this view every day. Every day. After one month. You will not enjoy anymore. <laughs> this their, year. their families probably owned that chunk of mm -hmm. land for a long time. Otherwise, how can they build right on top of the best rock right there, you know? It'd be like that house up there mm -hmm. on that hill. Look at that, there's a big building on top of that. This is my 
baby here. I've had this I've had this bike a long time and it took me probably about 15 years to get this done. 15 years you build this bike. Yeah, it's starting and stopping, you know, and getting the money together, getting different things done to it and all that. And how calls this bike? Like the name of the bike. This is a 1972 John Harmon chopper. Front end and frame was a John Harmon frame. And John Harmon was a, a famous chopper builder in the 70s. And he came out with his own style of bikes. And uh, he's and uh, I just would happen to be able to get my hands on one. And, uh, and I put a new a new drivetrain in it, you know, yeah. a new style drivetrain in it instead mm -hmm. of a, an old one, you know, so for reliability. Mm -hmm. And it's all, and everything else is handmade on the bike. The tank. It looks very cool. Yeah, the oil bag, the sissy bar, the pipes. Mm -hmm. How long it takes to build this uh, full tank? A tank like this it depends on uh, 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 probably a week. A week, okay. Yeah. So it's some guy built it for you or yeah no? yeah it's another guy built it yeah mm. and this is my duck shifter mm -hmm. shifter and it's a duck head because I'm a duck hunter <laughs> and uh, they, they call them a suicide suicide shifters mm -hmm. yeah. so and can you explain for what this long uh, I don't okay. know the English name of this. This is called an, an internal sp sprung girder. Mm -hmm. uh, or a spurter, they call it. So it's just for style? It's just for style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. It's for, the cool, for the cool factor. Mm -hmm. Do you have brakes, front brake? No front brake. But my rear brake mm -hmm. is right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I can uh, it'll hold me on a hill. If need be. Oh, it looks very cool. It it's, is very cool. It's very different and yes, it's only one in the world. Like only this. one in the world. Yeah, it's so one, cool. Only one of these in the whole world, and I and I like that. Mm -hmm. And my lights are nice and bright. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. So you have other bikes? Sure, come on in. This here is a Buell Harley Davidson bobber. And this okay, is so a, it's not a chopper, it's bobber. It's a bobber, yeah. Yeah, it's uh what's the difference between bobber and chopper? Well, a chopper, the, the ter that term come from back during World War II when the guys got out of the military in the USA. Mm -hmm. They bought the military bikes that were left over and then they would chop everything off of them. They would cut them up, make them their own, you know, give them a little bit more style, make them lighter. That's where the name chopper came from. So, and then within the chopper realm of things, uh, you have long bikes. Those are more or less called choppers nowadays. And then this style of bike is called a bobber. And it's like a, a bar hopper bike. But this is no bar hopper bike. This is a, a hot rod, fast, mean, crazy deal oh how many cc this is a 1203 1203 and in fuel motor in chopper 1200 1200 yeah yeah and this has a suicide set up on it too right here here's my shifter right there and everything on this bike is handmade mm -hmm. pretty much except the, the tank's not but and how many gallon? 
this tank is 2.2 gallons. 2.2. Mm -hmm. In mine, 2.7. Right. Yeah. I get about I get about 80, 70, 80 miles out of this. Mm -hmm. And then that's my driving Miss Daisy bike. But th this is where I take my old lady. When she wants to go, I take the comfy bike. It's Harley Davidson. Harley Davidson, Dyna Lowrider. Mm -hmm. oh, I like Dyna. What's the year? Is this? Uh, 2001. 2001. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, it's pretty fast and it's comfortable. This is a black powder gun. It, it's a, uh, it's one shot. It's the kind that you have to take and, you know. Oh, uh, like clean? No, no, this, you have to push your bullet down in. Oh, okay. And you put wow. powder in it and you have one shot. It's called a muzzle loader. Yeah. What's the year of this gun? Uh, what year? Yeah. Uh, let's see, 2010. 2010. Oh, yeah. So it's like almost new. Yeah. 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 And then this is <coughs> a 10 gauge shotgun. This is a, a gun that is a really big, it's a round that goes in this gun. I'll show it to you. It takes one of these. This is a big shotgun shell. This is what they're supposed to look like. See the difference? Yeah. <laughs> this is a 10 gauge. Mm -hmm. It kicks really hard. It's like boom. It really, really goes. And this is for geese. For geese. And this one is a semi-automatic, thirty odd six. It takes these. Wow. Yeah. So, and it's as fast as you can pull the trigger. So you can, can put only one uh, bullet? Three. A uh, three? Okay. <coughs> yep. <coughs> you're only allowed to have, <coughs> you're only allowed to have three bullets or shotgun shells in your gun if you hunt in the United mm -hmm. States. Yeah. And, uh, and it's all Lego, like to have these weapons in the United States right. you can do it. Right, right. This is, this is my newest one. This is a, a uh, Gearson. This is made in Turkey. This gun here. And uh, it's a waterfowl gun. And it shoots these. These are big ones. Magnums. These are 12 gauge, 3.5 inch Magnums with steel shot. And they're for ducks and geese. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and everybody should have a pair of these. If you ride motorcycles, you should have a pair of these. In case you get into a spot somewhere, at least you'll have a pair of brass knuckles, you know, to, mm. pr to protect yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's all Maybe just for self-protection. Crazy drunk people try to do something with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or better to have one of the guns. Oh, yeah, or, or one of these. Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum, hammerless, no safety. All you do is you, it's a bar room gun. You keep it in your pocket, nobody knows. And there it is. You have a lot of guns. Yeah, I got a bunch of them. Like, do you know how many guns you have? Like all your guns like uh, 100 or less no uh, less than i'd say le less than 50. Less but that's 50. still a lot yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's a lot yeah it's it's, it's still a lot mm -hmm. and this uh you, you want to show what this is this is a, a javelina from arizona it's not a pig its closest relative is a guinea pig guinea pig a guinea pig a little tiny guinea pig mm -hmm. you know what those are 
I don't know what is it. They're, they're like a little tiny rodent. Uh, they're a rodent about that big. Mm -hmm. And that's a giant rodent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not uh, like wild hog. It's, it's no, that's not a wild hog. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole different mm -hmm. species. It, it's a, it's, it's actually called a peccary. Mm -hmm. is this is technical name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and all these animals you kill? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for this and that. These right here, uh, uh, this is a longhorn sheep. And uh, that's a Corsica goat. And, but all that stuff over there I killed. The ducks. Are, you know, there's uh, one all the way to the right is a wood duck. And then the next one, the next left one is called a northern shoveler, then a mallard, and then the other one is a hybrid. Uh, it was it's weird looking, so I had to mount it. And this is a Canadian geese. Where? This one? Yes. Okay. And you have... Uh, this is I my bow. How do you call it in English? I don't know the name of this. Mm -hmm. This B-O-E? A B-O-W is a bow. Okay. Yeah. And... So, and do you need like any permit for this or you no. just can go and buy it? You can go buy. You don't have to have permits or anything. Okay. And you can get all kinds of tips for your arrows, uh, do different things. And you, it, it's endless what you can buy for these. And it, there, you could kill an animal 100 yards away with this. Wow. Yeah. Conceivably. <laughs> if you're good enough. Yep, and you anybody can have it. This gun is working. This is yeah. This is an antique, old police pistol from back in the '40s and '50s. That but I it's got. It's still working. Yeah, yeah, it works. Yes, it does. I had to restore this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'm not done with it yet. I'm gonna put it all back to you know original that's what I want to do with this but that's that's a 32 caliber so. cool yeah they, they like hearing about the guns don't they it's wild west this is the wild west yeah. and this here is a bass a smallmouth bass that is pretty big for around here and this is the lure that I caught him on. Looks like a real fish. Had that done. So you like weapons, you like choppers, you like hunting, you like uh, fishing? Fishing, hunting, and choppers. If I could do all three at the same time, I would. Yeah, I, I, I live for that. I do. Um, it's just what I love, man. This is my workstation here. It's dirty right now. How many years you ride a motorcycle? Okay. I started riding when I was 16. Nine years old and I'm 55 now. So that's a long time. Yeah. I started riding motorcycles when I was in high school. And been and doing is, it ever since. What is your first motorcycle? Has been? My first motorcycle was a 1961 Triumph pre-unit and it had a really long front end on it and it was real dangerous to ride and I would ride it to school every day and uh, that was my first one and then uh, uh, I've had probably 50 60 bikes in my life you know and this is what I have now but your favorite bikes right now is choppers. Choppers all the way. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right there. Choppers forever. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah. Choppers forever. Nice. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. You like real Americans from the movies. Yeah, well good. <laughs> good. That's what I, that's that's what it's all about, man. I love it. I, I, I take advantage of uh, my freedom here and be able to do what I want to do and and be happy. You know what I mean? It's a lot of people here don't realize how good we got it. 
Because you know, they've never been anywhere else but here. Yes, so I know what is it, how it's in other countries, especially in ours. Yeah. So, and yeah. here is... Way also have a lot of problems, but it's much more better. Yeah. Well, you know, you can say anything that you want to say, no matter how bad that it is, and if you can't get in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. You have a right to say anything that you want. You have a right to free speech. You're, you have a right to have an opinion about anything that you want. And it doesn't have to go with the mainstream, what everybody else thinks. It could be whatever you want. And nobody can come and put you in jail for it. You know, or, or you're not going to just disappear. You know, and that's what makes America America, man. It's being able to do that. You know, you can come here and start a business and live the American, you know, have a successful business if you work hard at it and then live the American dream. You can have whatever you want. You can have a house, out yeah, in the country, whatever. True. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you don't have anybody pushing you down saying you can't do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, so I take advantage of that. Yeah. So, and right now you're working or just... I, I'm, I'm a, I paint houses for a living. Yeah, that's what I do. I paint big mansions, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have a side business where I work on guns. You know, as a gunsmith. I had an apprentice for two years. And then uh, with guys that were younger than me. And uh, they taught me everything I knew about it. And now, you know, work on guns on the side. You know, and you can't... Where else in this world can you do that? Where people can bring you guns and you get to work on them, give them back to them, and they give you money for it. It, 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 it doesn't happen like that everywhere. You know, if you did that elsewhere, some places you'd go to prison. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, and I don't have to worry about that. About that here. Yeah, I like that America is very open, like with guns. Like in one way, it's. It's a problem because everyone have guns, right. but right now it's a culture, culture of America and American people. So, and if you say that it's in the United States, no any more guns? No. 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 It's no. not possible to say to the people. But I, I, I do want to say that if everybody is carrying a gun and the bad guys know that everybody has a gun, they're afraid. chances are they're not going to do no bad stuff because everybody's got a gun, you know, and uh, you know, the mass shootings that go on here, if everybody there had a gun, that wouldn't happen, you know, those guys only pick places where they know that, that they can get away with that, you know, and so I'm a pro-gun guy, you know, uh, but uh, I am, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not a Republican or Democrat. I don't believe in assault rifles. You know, I don't. I don't think that we need assault rifles. Uh, assault rifles are made to kill people, and uh, we're not supposed to be here wanting to kill each other. You know, so we should. We don't need those guns. But to hunt, yes. Yeah. So, are you allowed to have this kind of stuff where you're from? Oh. Uh. Actually, I, I don't know, but I, I think some people for hunting, yes, you can buy a guns just for hunting. Right. But I think it's it's very difficult to have this permit. I see. So and people actually don't have any guns at I all see. at home. So and if, if you uh, go with gun just on the street, like in public, people think that it's a toy. Then they, uh, they, they, they don't do it. Uh. So. So if I come walking in there and I had a gun in my back back pocket, they, the cops are going to go. No, oh, cops they they stop yeah. and uh, like they can check your like gun. What is it? And if it's a gun, you will have a big problem. Oh, you're going yeah. to prison. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, <laughs> but I think like if you go just on the streets on the public and you have a gun, many people they will think that it's maybe a toy or don't mention it yeah because it so doesn't happen here yeah because it's not normal like and people people don't know what is it right what right. is it gun right right yeah, there's many people like most of them they saw guns just in movies 
Well, and, and I, I imagine the government doesn't want everybody to have guns over there either. It's only in the United States where you, you can have a gun. No, well, I'm talking about where you're from. I imagine yeah. your government doesn't want everybody to have guns. No. 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 Don't want. Yeah. That would suck. <laughs> that would definitely suck. So, and you've been in Outlaws Motorcycle Club? I, I've been, I was in a, an Outlaw Motorcycle Club. Uh, it wasn't called the Outlaws, but it was an Outlaw group, and I was with them for a long, long time. One percent? One percenters. Mm -hmm. And uh, I joined up when I was a young guy. You know, I just become a man and belonged to that for a long time. And uh, been through a lot of things with them. Uh, some things I'm not proud of, but. I, I wouldn't change anything about you know about it, and um, I just uh, I got away from it because uh, of going to jail, and uh, it was very time-consuming and it was very expensive, and it was stressful. How long have you been in jail? Oh, I've been in prison three times uh, for lots of different things. Uh, um, longest time, you know, 18 months here, two years, two and a half years, and then I, you know, I did a lot of time in the county jail, and because I was doing lots of bad outlaw things, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and I just like my life the way it is now. I get to do. I don't have somebody telling me what to do or how to do it. I just uh, do my own thing now. You know, living the American dream, man. For real. This is the place, man. Yeah, I told you, like, this place, it's, for me, it's like from the movies. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man, and you, you're like a guy from the movie. Really? Like, who got guns, <laughs> choppers. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's real. I mean, uh, yeah, I know, like, all American movies, it's about real life in United States. Yeah. But people overseas, they don't know this, that it's no. real. They just watch, oh, it's a movie. No, and this is real. And many people, and like me, when we come to the to, to United States, we see everywhere, it's like, oh, it's, I saw this, for example, in one movie. Okay, this one in another movie. Yeah, yeah, it's it's real. It's real. It's, it's I don't know, I've seen all the movies, same ones you have. When I was growing up and all that, and uh, uh, and I'm here to say it's true. It's true if if that's some people uh, they don't live the dream. They they uh, do other things that and they're not happy. You know they're not doing what they want to do, but they're doing other things. I choose my own destiny. To do what makes me happy, and and this and, and this is it. This is what makes me happy. You know, I have a good old lady. I have a dog. I have a nice spread here. I got tons of friends. I get to go hunting and fishing anytime I want to. I get to ride my choppers anytime I want to, and nobody tells me what to do. Mm -hmm. And you how know? old are you? Fifty-five. 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 You know. So what? Whatever years I got left, I want to. I want to be happy. You know, I don't want to be looking over my shoulder. That's why I don't do that stuff. Anymore. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. No for, problem, brother. For sharing your. No problem, man. Everything what you have is yeah. so cool. Yeah. No, no problem. But that, that's another Buell motor there. That one is. We're, we're gonna build a bike with that one, and we got another motor over there. We're gonna use. And I got a big twin motor over there I'm building. And that's what it's about. When you get done building your bike and, you, and you're riding it around and stuff, for me, I have to start on another one. You know. Oh, and this here, you got to have one of these too. I was just looking at that. Yeah, you got to have one of these on your bike. Oh, nice. What is oh, really? Yeah, you got to have one of these. But it's legal if I... It's, it's legal, on yeah, yeah. I mean, it's for, you know, if you need a punch. It's for safety. Yeah, punch. Mm -hmm. And this little hole here is for your finger, so you don't 
lose it, this razor are sharp, or you can saw, but this is for personal protection. Right there. You wouldn't mess with a guy with one of these, would you? No. No, no. no thank you. <laughs> I'd go another way. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but I also have a good knife. I don't have nothing. Like, you don't have nothing? I you don't even have a knife? Because I, I'm not American, like, I, I don't know that I, I need this. You gotta have a knife, brother. I have just a small knife. Oh, come on now. You need a knife, dude. Let me give you a knife. That's like my buddy Danny. He goes over by my bike and he sticks a gun in my darn seat. And I shoved it down in between my, where the backrest goes. Let me give you this knife. This is super sharp. <laughs> I'm gonna give you this one. This is a skinny knife. It's okay. a redneck knife. Redneck knife? Yeah, this is what you use to uh, skin deer and elk or rabbits or or mm. or, or, the, or the strip wires on your bike that you need to fix yeah. or yeah, they call that a gut hook. Yeah, that's a gut hook right there. Stick it right in and you slit the belly yeah. of the deer open and it won't get to the gut. It just cuts the hide. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna give you this. Wow. Thank you. There you go. Well, thank you very much. Right. Yeah, don't cut yourself. Now. No, no, no. Now. But what I was always taught, when somebody gives you a knife, you have to give them a coin in return, so you don't sever your friendship. Yeah, what? that's true. Coin? That's it's an old, old wise tale. Old wise tale. Yeah, it's it's not real, but you don't have to give me one. I, I have coin. Okay. Any coin? Any coin. Just give me a penny. Yeah. Or I have a quarter. Okay. Thank you. Good. Now Twenty-five you, now, cents. Now you don't sever your friendship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow, well, I old, didn't know old, that. Old wise. <laughs> no, yeah, it's all good. Cool. <laughs> that, that 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 that's came from the Indians. Did it? Yeah, Native okay. Americans. So, what, when, if if you gave something to somebody, they gave you something in return. Mm. You know, whether whether it was an arrow or whatever, you know. Yeah. Okay, but thank you. You're welcome. Don't, just don't cut yourself. <laughs> no, no, no. Because it will cut you. That's yours there. Oh, it's mine. Yep. Ooh. So, this what looks what's, like. What, what's animals here? It's quail, dove, quail, dove, duck, and goose. And the name of the dish is. It's a. It's it's a a uh, wild game pot pie. Cool. Let's try. Yes. Hopefully you'll like it. It's hot, so be careful. Okay. Сейчас четыре тридцать утра. Мы только проснулись. Собираемся ехать. Хотим. Стали мы так рано, потому что хотим выехать пораньше из-за того, что днем очень сильно палит солнце. Байки будут перегреваться, и мы хотим сейчас вот с самого утра проехать максимально длинное расстояние, сколько сможем до того, как начнется жара. Потом мы где-нибудь передохнем, наверное, весь день, не знаю, да где, на каком мы трак стопим, посмотрим. Вот, и ближе к вечеру уже тут опять продолжим свой путь, едем в сторону Калифорнии. Сколько по времени займет, не знаю, у нас вообще запланирован один очень интересный город, но он находится где-то в 7 часах отсюда, где вот мы сейчас находимся. Посмотрим, доедем ли мы сегодня, если нет, то где-нибудь переночуем, я думаю. И уже там доберемся туда завтра. What's up, man? Oh, it's a bit chilly. Feels good. <laughs> Your nose is burned. No, it ain't. It's white. <laughs> it's white. <laughs> <laughs> it's burnt white. The first time on this trip, we up so early. Yeah.
Спустились мы только что с гор, снова на землю. В горах еще было более-менее, здесь уже начинает прям так сильно очень жарить, потому что там дальше у нас впереди только пустыня. Горы закончились, больше их не будет, и весь путь будет просто через степи, пустыни, выжженные земли, где никто не живет, даже заправок нету. Мы вот заехали сейчас буквально на последнюю заправочку, дальше по пути. Насколько я посмотрел по карте, больше ничего не будет. Миль сто, наверное. Вот. Так что, не знаю, сейчас доедем до следующей заправки. Это еще часа два, наверное, будем ехать, посмотрим. Пока не знаю, но он бат весь обмазывается кремом. От за... против загара все лицо белое. Я like Indian. Короче, весело. Сейчас сколько у нас времени? Где-то на 8 утра, наверное. 8.07. Сейчас еще немножко постоим, отдохнем и поедем. пожаловать в Калифорнию, мы сделали это. Только что прошли границу, там всех останавливают, досматривают. Нас не досмотрели, сказали, езжайте. И мы поехали. Вот табличка, и здесь новый, новый часовой пояс, Pacific Time. What you feel? Cool? Hot? It's very hot. Но мы сделали это. Осталось там 250 миль до Лос-Анджелеса, но мы сейчас туда не поедем, мы едем в другой город. Будем сворачивать с трассы, поедем сейчас через пустыню. Огромную пустыню, где-то миль 90. Там будет вообще ничего. Заправимся через миль 20 на последней заправке и погоним. Не знаю, доедем ли мы, потому что байки просто все раскалываются. Асфальт раскаленный, очень горячий. Но мы едем дальше. Тут сейчас, не знаю, градусов 50 по Цельсию. Очень жарко. Но мы едем дальше. Рок-н-ролл. Вот. Сейчас самая середина дня, 2 часа дня примерно. Не знаем, что делать, наверное, я все говорю, бата, давай поехали. Но, блин, очень жарко, не знаю, мы сейчас еще пока думаем. Возможно, поедем, надеюсь, бата хочет. Потому что я уже не хочу здесь сидеть ждать, это придется до самого вечера, еще часов 5, наверное, ждать. Потому что там женщина сказала, что жара это вообще не спадет отсюда. Вот. Ну, до самого вечера жара здесь стоять, так что смысла нету здесь стоять, ждать. Сейчас облака, солнца нету, может быть, более-менее проедем нормально. Ехать часа полтора до следующей заправки, 70 с чем-то миль. Вот. Такие вот новости. Сейчас, наверное, поедем.
What do you think? We go? Yeah, let's go. We're here, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, 70-80 миль до следующей заправки. Uh, Где-то посередине я видел пару зданий есть. Мы, возможно, там остановимся, передохнем, что байки остыли, если там будет тень, конечно. Вот, если тени не будет, поедем дальше. Надо, чтобы был ветер, чтобы мы не были в движении. Вот. У меня масло течет с байка, там вот, буквально. Но оно уже давно течет, и мне кажется, что как будто больше и больше начинает вытекать, не знаю. Непонятно из-за чего, но такая вот фигня. Блин, новый байк. Масло сечет. Короче. You ready? What? Погнали. Погнали. <laughs> Погнали. <laughs> Уже запомнил. <laughs> Ладно, все, пока солнца нету. Едем. Проехали полпути, заправки ни одной не было. Но, как, собственно, все и говорили, и Google карты показывали для этого. Мы нашли здесь вот такую крышу. Должен быть магазин, но он почему-то закрыт. Но тут, слава богу, есть вот эти вендинг-машины с, э, с холодной водой. Точнее, воды там вообще-то нету. Вот две кнопки, и они пустые. Но там есть только всякие газировки, от которых хочется пить еще больше. Но, блин, они холодные, как бы хоть что-то. Ух, байки капец как греются. Очень жарко. Жесть. Но мы по пути проехали, осталось еще половина. И как будем отдыхать здесь? Мы еще взяли, загнали сюда мотоциклы. Прям под крышу. Сюда нельзя их загонять, но блин. Магазин закрыт, никого нет, значит нас и прогонять некому. Уже 5 часов вечера, мы все еще сидим возле этого магазина. Солнце уже потихонечку, жар спадает, солнце. Наверное, сейчас поедем. 27 миль до следующей заправки, заправимся и поедем в Слаб Сити. товарищи просто посреди пустыни где нету ничего сзади и спереди только дорога у меня полные ботинки песка но это очень круто уже солнце падает не так жарко как было до этого но очень круто это мать его Пустыня с огромными дюнами. Это круто, это очень круто.
У меня весь рот в песке. Но я доволен, как слон. Кребаная пустыня. Безжизненная земля. Здесь никого нет. И ничего нет. Только я и пустыня. И там еще бат стоит. Это круто. О. А здесь находится оазис который я нашел в своем рюкзаке. И я не умру от жажды. Я выпью эту чудесную воду, и мы поедем дальше. Спасибо, боги песков, за этот прекрасный эликсир. Let's go walk, maybe.
Hey, how's it going? Doing well. How y'all doing? Hot. Yeah. Hot. A little warm out here, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, come on. What can I do for you guys? Uh, what? What can I do for you guys? What does this mean? What can I do? He, he, he's asking what, what he can do for us. What, oh. what do we want? Yeah, we want to stay a oh. couple nights. A week. couple nights? Yeah. A week? No, a couple nights. A couple, couple nights. nights. Yeah. Okay, yeah, come on in. Let me check and see what we're doing. Most of our stuff's still on Airbnb. Let me just check that and make sure. Oh, they didn't do Airbnb. Yeah, no worries. Гребаная пустыня, где нет ничего, просто на десятки километров, сотни километров. Есть только один песок, и ничего, кроме вашего песка нет. Я уже устал, у меня все ботинки забились песком. Я продолжаю этот путь, я должен дойти до источника воды, до Оазиса. Я до него дойду. Thank <sighs> you.